let's understand this uh, coupling phenomenon. First point, this coupling occurs in the sarcotubular system. Let me say here, now this point onward, whenever we say sarco, it will mean muscle. In this particular chapter, we will take it in the context of the muscle. So, sarcotubular system means system of tubules uh, in the muscle. Uh, later on, we will say sarcoplasm, cytoplasm of the muscle fiber, sarcoplasm, sarcolemma, muscle fiber membrane will be sarcolemma. Okay. So, sarcotubular system means the system of tubules in the muscle. In this uh, sarcotubular system, there are two types of tubules. Here is a muscle. And uh, for this muscle, there are there is a system of tubules. There are T tubules at regular distances. Transverse. So, if this is the muscle and its length, then along the length will be longitudinal and this will be the transverse. So, you can see these T tubules. And then we have longitudinal tubules or L tubules. Longitudinal tubules or the L tubules also now shown here. Okay. So, this is a system of tubules in the muscle. Uh, endoplasmic reticulum has been a little further evolved into this kind of a tubular system, sarcotubular system. All right. Uh, there is something called as a triad. One end of the T tubule and two blind ends on either side creates a triad. This is the triad. One end of the T tubule and two blind ends means closed ends on either side. So, this makes a triad, three triad. Okay. The coupling occurs in the triad. Then uh, uh, the expanded ends of the L tubules, they are called as cisterns or cisterne, singular cistern, multiple, uh, I mean plural would be cisterne. Let us write cistern. These are the storehouse of intracellular calcium. The intracellular calcium is stored here. Okay. Next, now coming to the most important aspect of this discussion. In the membrane of the T tubules, we have a protein called as DHPR. DHPR. Where is it present? Present in the membrane of the T tubules. Uh, DHPR is dihydropyridine receptor. There is a category of drugs called as dihydropyridines and they are uh, a type of calcium channel blockers. We will talk about it in the application, uh, clinical application part. Well, DHPR, the dihydropyridine receptor has a voltage sensing mechanism. It has got a voltage sensor, right? Then, in the membrane of the L tubule, there is another protein called as RYR, that is rhinodyne receptor. Now, this rhinodyne receptor is a calcium release channel. 
calcium release channel. So you can see here that the calcium which is stored in the uh, terminal cisterns, this calcium will be released through the RYR into the sarcoplasm. Look here the cytoplasm of the muscle, the sarcoplasm. These tubules are little on the external aspect and behind them there are those myofilaments, actin and myosin or thin and thick filaments are present just behind the, these. Okay, so this is the structure of the sarcotubular system. Now let us see uh, how the coupling happens. Basically, it is going to be like this. Impulse from the nerve, let us say this is the nerve, nerve uh, uh, and axon terminal. Impulse came here, then it crosses the neuromuscular junction, then it will enter the muscle. It will travel deep into the muscle via T tubule and then it will be sensed by the DHPR. It will be sensed by the DHPR. Uh, why? Because we have said already that DHPR has got a voltage sensing mechanism and impulse is what? Action potential is what? It is a voltage change. So, that electrical change, voltage change will be sensed by the DHPR and it will interact with RYR. Mechanically, it will open up the RYR channel or mechanically interact with RYR, just a mechanical interaction. And once the RYR is open, rhinodyne receptor, the calcium will be released from its storage site into the sarcoplasm. And this calcium will combine with troponin C uh, present on the thin filament. That will initiate the process of contraction. So you can see here, up to the release of calcium, the events were electrical and after the release of calcium, the mechanical process of thin and thick uh, filament interaction started and therefore calcium is the coupling agent. Let us write it. Uh, if you have a short note, draw this diagram and draw this flowchart which I am about to draw now. Electrical impulse crosses the neuromuscular junction, enters the muscle via T tubule and now the most important part. It is sensed by the DHPR. Therefore, one must not forget that uh, the DHPR has a voltage sensor. It can sense the voltage change and impulse, excitation, action potential is nothing but a voltage change. Sensed by the DHPR, then DHPR interacts with R, Y, R, mechanical interaction. This interaction and R, Y, R is a calcium release channel. So, calcium will be released from the cistern into the sarcoplasm. And as we have seen already that uh, the calcium from its store storage site has been released into the sarcoplasm and then it will bind to troponin C. Troponin C is present on the thin filament and we have already said that just behind these, there are those thick and thin filaments. So, calcium will be released into the sarcoplasm. Calcium will combine with troponin C and this will initiate the process of contraction, process of thin and thick interaction, interaction of thin and thick filaments and that is what is a contraction which is a mechanical process and that is what you need to write in the excitation contraction coupling. The electrical excitation resulted in contraction which is the mechanical type of event and these two different types of events have been coupled together by the calcium.
Okay. Uh, MCQ, we have already seen one MCQ. RYR is what type of channel? Uh, L type calcium channel in the L tubule membrane. Yes. Um, now, a few more things related to this excitation contraction coupling. One is, what is the clinical application of all of this? And uh, before I tell you the clinical application, I want you to note one point here. And that is, all the calcium that has come into the sarcoplasm, all of it has come from the intracellular storage site. It is present inside the L tubule. It came into the sarcoplasm. And as we have been saying all this while, that the calcium cannot be kept high in the cytoplasm. The cytosolic calcium concentration has to be kept very, very low. So once calcium initiates its process of contraction, then uh, it has to be sent back. We will see that little later. Okay. So clinical application, there are three diseases which are the diseases related to EC coupling. One is malignant hyperthermia. This is the most important one. I am mentioning the other two, but they are not so common. Anyways, central core disease. This will be uh, easy for you to remember. CCD. I am sure most of you are aware of CCD. And uh, uh, th th third one is Brody's disease. So, uh, these three diseases are the diseases related to the excitation contraction coupling. Defective excitation contraction coupling results in these diseases. We are interested in the first one. So, uh, malignant hyperthermia. Let us try to understand more about this. Well, although it mentions malignant, it does not necessarily mean a malignancy. It does not necessarily mean a cancerous condition. You will get such condition, uh, you will hear such conditions later on. For example, malignant hypertension. It is not a malignant condition or a cancerous condition. Though uh, it denotes certain amount of seriousness, okay, in that sense, the malignant. Here, the malignant hyperthermia. Hyperthermia, that means excessive heat generation. Excessive heat generation because of excessive muscle contraction. You know, uh, you must have seen the chills and rigors, oscillatory muscle contractions, rhythmic muscle contractions. And this rhythmic vigorous muscle contractions, uh, they generate heat in the body. Something similar is going to happen here. Malignant hyperthermia uh, results from a genetic defect. Genetic defect in the gene that codes uh, the uh, the gene that codes RYR. Okay, so RYR gene is defective, and therefore the protein RYR will be defective. And what is RYR? The calcium release channel. It's defective, which means what? Calcium release will be defective. And therefore, uh, the excessive calcium release will result in excessive muscle contractions and heat generation. That is malignant hyperthermia. So, what happens in this condition is, uh, routinely, I mean otherwise, the patient is normal. Uh, nothing much is seen clinically under routine conditions. But, just before any surgery, suppose this person has to undergo surgery, the person having genetic defect of RYR. Certain drugs are administered. Skeletal muscle relaxants like succinylcholine. You must be aware that before any surgery, skeletal muscle relaxants are administered because uh, the patient should not move uh, his or her limbs during the procedure. Therefore, muscles are completely relaxed. So, this is a skeletal muscle relaxant, succinylcholine. Or, 
uh, inhalational anesthetics like halothane or ether these are the gaseous anesthetics gases anesthetic gases inhalational anesthetics when these are administered somehow what happens is there is a spontaneous interaction between dhpr and ryr and this results in excessive release of calcium resulting in uh, excessive muscle contractions rhythmic oscillatory excessive muscle contractions and when these muscle contractions happen as you know in the case of chills and rigors there is massive heat generation in the muscle so there will be heat generation muscle metabolism will increase so obviously increase metabolism will cause increase heat generation and this is what happens just before the surgery so imagine the patient is uh, posted for a surgery and before that let's say by 10 minutes prior this these one of these drugs were given and on the operation table itself there was vigorous shaking contractions of the muscle, uh, of the uh, seen in the patient that is what happens in the malignant hyperthermia how do you treat this see there were no prior symptoms then uh, how do you treat such condition well uh, we administer uncoupling agent which is dantrolene sodium dantrolene sodium look the defect is in the excitation contraction coupling so excitation is resulting in excessive contraction uncoupling agent will uncouple these two i mean excitation and contraction will be uncoupled so that even though there is abnormal excitation it should not result in, in abnormal excessive contractions that is what is the treatment for this kind of condition and that is the malignant hyperthermia all aspects uh, discussed in short